G'day guys and gal. If you haven't been living under a rock or waking up from a traumatic coma, you probably have played or at least know about Dark Tide, the latest and greatest 40k game to come out. Now Dark Tide is quite a good game and I did do a review on it, but today we aren't here to get our hands dirty and pwn some heretics. We're here to suss out the lore and storyline of Dark Tide. After all, that is literally what I do. This video is sponsored by Fat Shark, the developers of Dark Tide, so massive cheers to them. It's always awesome when Warhammer licensed companies reach out and want to work together. Today we'll go over the context and plot of Dark Tide. I've seen a bunch of other creators do lore videos on Dark Tide, but no one really seems to tackle the storyline in the slightest, more so just giving context to what is going on and who's what and where's when. But with the actual storyline and characters, at least partially written by Dan Abnett, a legendary Black Library author, surely there's some juicy lore to squeeze out of this. Also, spoilers for Dark Tide's plotline. No shit. Uh, let's get into it. The game begins with you locked in horny jail on an inquisitorial prison ship, the Inquisition being the Imperium CIA on steroids. You and many other outcasts and rejects have been imprisoned for dubious reasons. The majority of you are probably innocent of your crime. However, as the Inquisition says, innocence proves nothing. As the ship is arriving at the planet of Tertium, a key Imperial hive world known for its manufacturing of Lehman Rust battle tanks across the sector. The prison ship is attacked and boarded by cultists of Nurgle, who attack with extremely impressive amounts of force and discipline for a bunch of dudes who are known for rolling in their own shit. The Inquisitorial forces are overwhelmed with the subsequent firefight busting open your jail cell. The cultists leave you alone as they don't imagine that a prisoner on death row will try to stop them. However, as you are not only innocent, but also a devout follower of the God Emperor of Mankind, you quickly prove them wrong by bludgeoning, smashing, and blowing them apart. You encounter the injured form of one of your jailers and escape the ship alongside her, traveling to a different inquisitorial ship called the Morning Star, the flagship of Inquisitor Grendel, who may even be a Lord Inquisitor, considering the insane amounts of resources resources she has, as well as her having a proper void ship. Most Inquisitors only have a small warband of warriors and assistants, as they generally rely on rogue traders or military fleets to travel through the warp with. As you had just saved a high-ranking member of this particular Inquisitorial force, you are absolved of your crimes and contracted into Inquisitor Grendel's army. See, Tertium's been having some pretty serious issues. The Nurgleite cults have launched multiple uprisings, disrupting the planet's production capabilities and giving a shitload of people warp aids. This has then allowed monsters such as Beasts of Nurgle and Large Plague Ogrins to manifest and cause even more damage. The standard Inquisitorial Stormtroopers have been getting smashed during the engagements, leading Inquisitor Grendel to authorize the use of the surviving prisoners from the other now lost prison ship as experimental mercenaries. As these prisoners include psychers, Ogrins, veteran soldiers, and zealots with such intense faith that they are literally blessed by the Emperor, not to mention a shitload of plot armor, these prisoners actually make quite the fighting force, quickly tipping the balance of power away from the Nurgleite forces by assassinating their warlords, retaking strongholds, stopping plagues from spreading, and a dozen other things that contribute to the war effort. Now, as you create your character from scratch, including their name, cosmetics, gender, personality, and voice actor, you don't really get much deep lore or backstory on yourself. Sure, you can pick a few options at the start of the game, but it doesn't really come up, and you soon forget what superficial backstory details you picked. However, this does have the added benefit of making you feel like cannon fodder, a pawn in the Inquisition's chess match against Nurgle, one mercenary in a thousand, whose death would mean literally nothing. It's a refreshing change from the chosen one Mary Sue tropes we have seen time and time again, but it does mean you need to focus your attention on the current present lore and not what happened before the events leading up to you being on that Inquisitor's prison ship. As you complete more and more missions for the Inquisition, their trust in you deepens. You get introduced to more and more of the Inquisitor's retinue, starting with Zola, the captain you saved, before progressing to Moro, who I think is the ship's captain. From there you meet the others, like the ship's tech priest Hadron and Masorzi the pilot. Shit starts to get serious when interrogator Renek, who is more or less Inquisitor Grendel's second, becomes aware of your existence and exploits at a similar time to it being discussed that there is a traitor on board the ship who is trying to sabotage the Inquisition's effort on Tertium. However, you aren't involved in the search effort for the traitor as you are one of the suspects. Well, I mean, everyone's a fucking suspect, it's the Inquisition. So you keep getting sent down to perform more and more missions with the help of the new crew.
crew members you've just met. Tech Priest Hadron guides you on the missions where you need to reawaken machine spirits, extract data or anything that involves a toaster, whilst the red hot missions that require fast extractions will involve Masozi. At a similar time to your meteoric rise, another acolyte has been just as successful if not more so, also completing dozens of missions and gaining a lot of inquisitorial favour. However, unknowns to everyone, this other highly successful acolyte is the traitor they've been looking for, likely using their links to the Nurgleite cults to be able to complete super difficult and impressive missions, while you on the other hand had to literally rip and tear your way through dozens of thousands of bad guys. This traitorous acolyte has successfully killed multiple inquisitorial guards, sent out transmissions and spread corruption. Usually a traitor wouldn't be able to do so much damage, however with the success she had been having on her missions, she was considered to be a more highly trusted and respected acolyte, one of the candidates who had become eligible to officially join the inquisitorial warband. This was a big deal as whoever was chosen to join would more or less become a part of the inquisitorial retinue, becoming one of the most powerful and respected agents in the galaxy. I mean, I mean, fuck, it's even possible in rare cases for members of a retinue to be eligible to one day become an Inquisitor themselves. If this traitor was able to join the Inquisitor's retinue, it would almost be game over for Inquisitor Grendel, as now the traitors would have an agent deep in the Inquisition's midst. Not Idilio. You progress through your missions, eventually being allowed to operate higher up in the Hive City, in the more rich affluent districts. There is some poetic beauty here. You literally start at the bottom, in the sewers of the Hive Cities of Tertium, slowly but surely progressing upwards, from the depths of the hive to its heights. In some missions you can even see the sky. After gaining enough of the Inquisition's respect and trust, aka hitting level 30, Interrogator Renix summons his two best acolytes for a ceremony, you and the traitor. See while you were pruning noobs and kicking ass, Renick had eventually discovered the identity of the traitor. He unveils that one of you will officially join the Inquisition, whilst the other one is about to eat a bullet. He points his gun at you, however you are a loyal servant of the Emperor. You you do not flinch, blink or beg. However, Renick is just having a laugh, <laughs> what a memester, and then quickly points his gun at the actual traitor. The traitor flinches, freaks out, backing away before running for their life. One high caliber bullet to the back of the spine is all it takes to end their miserable life. With the traitor sorted and your loyalty assured, you officially join Inquisitor Grendel's retinue. And that's kinda it for the main story. Due to the nature of Darktide's gameplay, that being quite open and non-linear, it can't really have a definitive ending per se. Imagine you would just grind it to get to level 30 and then Tertium is saved and you just can't play as a character anymore. No, despite your efforts, all that really happened was that a traitor was uncovered and dealt with, whilst dozens of small victories were had against the no forces. There is also some lore to be learnt from character interactions, such as how the Zealots view Captain Zola with respect, or that the Ogryn is just one big lovable retard. But since I'm not going to play 500 hours to uncover all the nuances of their conversations, as well as the fact that the conversations themselves are pretty shallow due to the massive variety of potential characters and voice actors, I can't really pull too many insights here. Another issue is that as the missions are designed to be replayable as a part of the grind aspect, none of the warlords you slay or missions you complete are particularly notable or unique. The game isn't split up by sections or special boss fights, it's just progressed by you leveling up and the Inquisition trusting you more and more, alongside the traitor subplot. I suspect that since Darktide is more or less a live service, we will get the fluff thrown in as we go along. One of the shorter videos today, there just isn't a whole lot of lore and plot going on right now, so instead of me padding this out with nonsense, I'll let you carry on with your day. Link to download Darktide is in the description. Buy it if you want to support me, the developers, and your own dopamine levels. Peace.